In this video, we're going to focus on how to simplify nth root expressions that have numbers inside of the roots. So let's first look at the definition. For any real numbers, a and b, and any positive integer n, if a is being raised to the n power and equal to b, then we say a is the nth root of b. So what does this mean? Before you've dealt with square roots, there are also cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots and sixth roots and seventh roots and so on. And so the process, you're going to simplify the roots just like before. It's just there's going to be one little twist to the end based off of if you're dealing with square root, cube root, fourth root. So let's just do our prime factorization with 81, the cube root of 81, and to help us out. So 81 breaks into 9 and 9. 9 breaks into 3 and 3 and 3 and 3 for the other 9. Now, when you dealt with square roots, if you dealt with square roots, you looked for pairs. And the reason why you look for pairs is because, you know, really, you know, you're dealing with the square of a number. The opposite of square root is a square. When you're dealing with cube roots, you don't look for pairs because, you know, if I'm raising something to the third power, there's three of them. And so when I'm dealing with cube roots, I don't look for a pair. That is what works for square roots. I look for sets of three of the same number. So if I look, here's one, three, two, three. You know, I have one set of three of the same number. So I can take out one of those. You know, I have one set of these three, so I'm going to take a three out. And what remains inside is the cube root of three. And so that's my final answer. I have three to cube root of three. So when you're dealing with a cube root, you look for sets of three of the same number. So let's kind of apply some logic. When I had square roots, I look for sets of two. Cube roots, I look for sets of three. So if I have fourth roots, I'm going to look for sets of four. And so we have a very large number here. We have 768. Well, I'm going to break it down into 4 and 192. 4 breaks into 2 and 2. 192 breaks into 4 and 48. I'm going to break 4 down into 2 and 2 again. You know, 48 breaks into 8 times 6. 8 breaks into 2 and 4, and then 4 breaks into 2 and 2. Still got to do this. 6 is 2 and 3. So this is some long branches. So I'm going to mark the ends. Uh, when you get long branches like this, you're going to want to actually be able to see where does the prime factors exist? Where do they stop? And so anywhere I have this green dot, I see all the ends. And so I'm looking for here, fourth root, I'm looking for four of the same number. And so if I look, here's one, two, three, four. So I have four twos. So I can take one out. If I continue along and look at the end of the branches of some more, I see I have one, two, another two, three twos. I have four twos again. So if I circle them, here are four twos again. So I can take out another two. What remains inside is a 3. So I have a 2 times 2 on the outside, and I still have the fourth root of 3, which simplifies to give me 4 times the fourth root of 3. And so this is how you simplify nth roots. You look at what the root is, whether it's a cube root, fourth root, fifth root, and that tells you how to pull out, whether you do sets of three or sets of four or sets of five. And so that's simplifying nth root expressions.